<laughs> Hello community. Do you remember the new Luna Haystack? We have something brand new today. So you remember we had this last in the middle problem for a long time. And just think about April 2024 here, Microsoft and they said, hey, we found data-driven solution to overcome the last in the middle problem if we had long context window. And here they showed you here, for example, the relative position of 800 sentences on the x-axis or 800 function on the x-axis or 750 entities of a database. And you'll see if you look at the performance at the y-axis, for example here, blue GPT-4 Turbo goes down from 100% and comes down to 70% here, somewhere at 550, and then it climbs up. Or if you look here at the gray one, this is our Mistral 7B, the old one, never mind. You see it started here at 85% and then it went down to 60%. And if you had a code function retrieval somewhere in the middle, you see it went down to about 4 or 5% success rate. So this real gap here we used to call lost in the middle, and for quite some time it was a problem. We all ran this test, LLM test, the needle haystack test. It was a pressure testing LLM. And what we primarily tested for was in-context retrieval of real long context LLMs. Now you know that exactly five months ago I showed you the real solution to the problem, and this was Ring Attention by Berkeley. With ring attention, they could achieve 1 million plus context length with no problems at all. Google later did this here, and I call it here, the new Infini Attention Transformer designed by Google for context length of 1 million token and more, based on the work of Berkeley and Google. And this was the real solution to the problem. But, you know, went dark. Claude 3.5 Sonnet, today you have only 200k maximum token length. Why? And then September 11, you have here from Google Cloud here, they come up and they say, hey, we do a needle and haystack test and we show you the performance of Gemini 1.5 Pro. And we do this with 10 million token length because this is simply what we need for 10 hours of video or for 107 hours of audio or simply here for 7 million words. And you see 100%, 100%, and they have here above 99.7% for the text haystack. So you see immediately, this is not really a test anymore now, end of September 2024. And it went dark again for about 12 days. And then we have Michelangelo, published here on September 23rd, 2024, by Google DeepMind and Google Research. They say, hey, we do now a long context evaluation that goes significant beyond the haystack, the needle in the haystack test, and we do this via some Latin structure queries. So they have new a new query framework, and what is so interesting, they move now from basic retrieval task so that the LLM is simply not missing out on the data information in the middle of a 200k token length. But now we move to more sophisticated reasoning. And we do an assessment of the reasoning if we have a 1 million token length. Or if you're only with Sonnet a 200k token length, where some other models only have a 128k token length. So this is now the beauty from basic retrieval to a reasoning assessment on this long context length because we move into video and audio. So therefore, now you understand here my <laughs> thumbnail from today, we move from a basic retrieval task in a haystack to what we call an LSQ. And we have three subtasks that are important. You can miss one, you can succeed on one, but the point is, of course, that you want that you pass all three tests. Let's have a look at this in detail. So, rapid expansion here of the context windows in modern LLMs. We have 1 million token, we have 10 million token for the video. But Needle in a Haystack simply does not do it anymore. This does not fully assess the model capacity of our AI system to reason, to synthesize, and to discriminate between the relevant and the irrelevant information. And now he explains here the name of Michelangelo, because you remember when Michelangelo got a real huge block of Carrera Marmor, and he already saw his statue there, and the task was just to chisel away the irrelevant marmor pieces, the irrelevant information. So welcome, now we are working with Michelangelo with a set of minimal diagnostic tasks. 
the framework latent structure queries lsq concept and what we do we reflect on the reasoning capabilities rather than on the old-fashioned pre-training data memorization task now, the first one, a latent list, is simple. It focuses here on stateful reasoning, where the model simply must track transformation over times. The second one, MRCR, emphasizes here the fine-grained disambiguation between highly similar pieces of information. I will explain this in a moment. And then we have the test that I love, IDK. It is simply, you can call it a metacognitive reasoning task, or it is simply the task where the machine tells you, I don't know it. So let's have a little bit of fun of this and let's have it the result if we apply this Michelangelo framework, the code is from Google, to it and let's have a look. Now the first task here, the latent list task, is simply implemented as a sequence of Python operations that modify a Python list. It couldn't be easier. The task now, however, is you must track and output the state of the list after all this transformation. So the complexity of the task is not the length of the context, and we are working between 1 million, 10 million tokens, but it is determined by the number of operation and the complexity of the operation. So what we test is more or less the computation memory of our agent. We have this when we have dynamically changing information stream. If you have a real-time data stream coming in providing you constantly every millisecond with new data you have no the ai agent has to decide which part of this information is essential and what is a non-essential information so how to do this that you can that the ai system can ignore irrelevant context plus let's have a look here at the performance so here you have an x-axis, simply the number of tokens. And we go from 512 token to 128k token, or Sonnet has now 200k token length. And you see here, we start beautiful at 100% if we stay within the first 512 tokens. But then we fall down to 60% even if we have the 1000 token mark. And this is JetGPT for Omni. So, if you have more than a thousand tokens, your cumulative average score of this particular testing goes down from 100% to 60%. And this is the best LLM. Look, the blue one here is the Claude Opus, and then the red one, of course, is Gemini 1.5 Pro. What you see, more or less, they start and they, they are about here at 30%. So, this is not a good number. And you might say, my goodness, what happens if we go from 200k to 1 million token. And here you have it from Google, and they show you here, look, the Gemini flash here in orange, this is the performance data, real linear performance, and in red, you have the Pro from August, and you have also here a linear performance at about, I don't know, 25%, the cumulative average score. So, all the other models stop here before 128K, Sonnet goes to 200K, but this is it more or less. So if we do video or audio or more text, and I need much more text, you see we have a constant performance in this particular text. There's no degradation in the performance. Let's go for the second test. Now, the second test has a funny name, multi-round co-reference resolution. And it is simple that we have a reasoning about adversarial context. And we have this and we do this about real similar context. So, for example, I have multiple poems about penguins. And then, after one million token, I ask you, hey, you remember there was this single special penguin, and now I wanted you argue only about the information, not of the other 999 penguins, but one penguin that I described you. Now, tell me everything about this one penguin and argue about this one penguin. So you see, we're talking here about adversarial similar examples, and this is a real hard test to perform. What we do, we have here the ability to make fine-grained distinction between real similar pieces of information, and you can have this either in your customer service interaction, because if a customer calls, you know sometimes it is just a word that is different, or sometimes it is just some little characters that are different, or if you go for a legal case resolutions, there it is so important, you get it absolutely right. Or if you want here an analogon, if the typical uh, task was find a needle in a haystack, now we have a haystack and in this haystack we have one million needles and all those needles are almost identical. There's only one needle in this haystack of this one 
well, close to one million other needles that is different. And the task is now to find this needle that is different. So you see, much more complex task, real interesting. Let's have a look here again. You remember we start here with only 128k token length. And let's have a look at the performance. And again, you see, either if you go with GPT-4 Turbo or you go with GPT-4 Omni, you have a rather similar performance curve, which would indicate that those models are not so different at all. Because look, we start here, here real close to the first 1,000 token, we are close to 100%, and then if we go to 8,000 tokens, we are already down here to 80 plus percent, and then we are going down to 70%. So interesting that quite different models, a Turbo and an Omni model, has an almost identical performance curve here. It is a little bit different if you go to Claude. If you go here, Claude 3.5, Sonnet here, the light blue, you see here, this is here, and it is almost... If you want here in a linear performance between 32K and 128K at about 70%. And then here we have Gemini and you see here Gemini 1.5 Pro is the red one. We start above 95% and also we go down to, but look, we go only down to 85%. 85% this is about here at 128K. So you see already in this small narrow band of 0 to 128K here, Gemini is outperforming all the other models. And of course, if you continue from 128k to 1 million, you see exactly here a linear performance. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, of course, it has to do in the depth of the knowledge about ring attention and infinite transform and everything else. And then now this third test. And the third test is the test that I love, and it is simple to assess if an AI model can recognize when it simply lacks sufficient information to give you an answer. And the correct answer in those cases is, I don't know. So, the objective is here, if you go for a higher order metacognitive skill level, to recognize your knowledge gap as an AI system. And I do prefer this because the other alternative would be that the system starts to hallucinate. Because if it is that it is faced with unknown information and the system wants to provide an answer to you, it starts to hallucinate. And in my experiments, GPT-4 is really, really heavily biased to hallucinate when it is missing or has unknown information to perform the task. And I prefer a system that tells me, buddy, I don't know the solution to a system that starts to hallucinate and give me just nonsense answers. So again, you know this test by now, you know the color coding, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is here the best model, as you can see here, in this narrow band from 512 tokens to 128k tokens. But of course, if we then look here to the 1 million, you see everything stops more or less. And then we have Gemini 1.5 Pro. Please note that this one is here the model from May. So this is not the latest and I wonder why Gemini or Google decided to not give us yet the latest data, because I would say, yeah, it would be somewhere, maybe a little bit, a level higher than the old model here from five months ago. So real interesting, those three tests, of course, are within one common framework. Just for my little green grasshoppers, remember, these tests are kind of complementary because they cover here the spectrum of computation, memory, and reasoning for our long context task. So the latent list pushes here the model's computational memory. This MRCR challenges here the model's contextual reasoning on real detailed context information that is really similar. And the I don't know test judgments here focus here on error recognition, which is important for model to avoid incorrect inferences when the information is simply missing and we do not want that the next modus operandi of this AI model is then to start to hallucinate. Just tell the user, I don't know. Wasn't this kind of interesting? And of course, there's an outlook if you want. The conclusion is, yes, this is a test that is much more powerful than the needle and haystack test. This is a test that is focusing here on the reasoning capability in all the bandwidth, in all the segments of a 1 million token context length or a 10 million context length because we want to have the reasoning assessment. And of course, we will move to higher multimodal models, video, audio, sensor array data coming in in real time. And you know, the AI model has to differentiate between relevant information and irrelevant information in milliseconds.
I hope you found it interesting. I hope you had a little bit of fun and it would be great to see you in my next video.